I have it broken down into 10 things, uh, very simple ways. Number one, I'm going to give you an intro. Number two, I'm going to give you some questions to get you thinking. Number three, I'm going to teach you some good and bad habits. Number four, I'm going to ask you some, I'll give you some answers to those questions. And then number five, I'm going to teach you guys seven ways how to build good habits. Does that sound good? Yeah. So, you guys want habits that people do in a couple hundred grand a year? Yep. Absolutely. Next, you guys, some, the second half of the uh, event today is going to be on hiring assistants. It's a famous question I get from people. You know, where do I start? What do I get them to do? How much money do I pay them? I got all that taken care of for you. And I'm going to give you some examples of what people do to be successful. And then we'll summarize it. And if you guys want any more information on this, we'll be emailing you guys the video. My trusty uh, buddy here, Henry, is going to be videotaping it for us today. Okay. And we will send it to you guys. If you want to come to any of our workshops ever, you can come to those. This is what we do on a weekly basis. And I don't care where you work, I'll help you. I want to take your business to the next level. You just got to be dedicated to it. Fair enough? Fair okay. enough. All right, let's get started. So, step number one. Um, first off, congrats for investing yourself because I get a lot of excuses from people in our life and they say, I don't have the time. Fair statement? You don't have the time to not invest in what? Yourself. Uh, yourself. <clears throat> so first off, it started off, get a round of applause, get a little energy in here because I forgot right there. <laughs> Number two, are you guys alive, excited, and full of energy? Yes. 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 Are you alive, excited? Yes. 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 All right. So I love that. It's an old Mike Ferry thing. I love it. I love it. So 2015. Are you guys ready for 2015? Yeah. Yes. Who's glad 2014's over? Okay, we've got some. Who had a good 2014? Right? So you're excited to roll it into 2015. Is that a fair statement? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. So you'll see that in groups. There's going to be a mix. What we're going to make today is everybody here, if you listen to what we say and you take notes and you work on two or three things, you can be successful. If you sit here today and you don't take notes, you're wasting your time. Why? I can't, I can't remember, remember, remember everything. What happens to a human mind? It goes in, and then where's it go? Human mind. How many times do you have to hear something for it to sink in? Seven to ten times, they tell you, right? <coughs> Think about school, studying. Unless you're extremely smart, I was not. You didn't read one thing one time and remember, did you? No. no. Yeah. So, these are notes that I took from Tom Ferry's event the other day, and I read and read and read his notes over and over and over again. I created my own presentation for you guys today. And I'll reread it, reread it. So for the last two days, I've been practicing and reading and reading it. I've heard this stuff for years and years and years. But guess what happens? It finally does what? Sinks in. Sinks in. Sinks in. You don't know what day it's going to sink in, but someday it clicks. Fair, Nick? Just someday it just clicks and you just start rocking and rolling, right? So who wants to invest 1.5 hours of their life today and take the outside world and throw it out? Okay. Yeah. Right? I got a sick daughter at home. The in-laws take care of her. For an hour and a half, it's just with you guys, okay? You guys, same thing. You can easily sit on your phone and check email, okay? You can easily answer a phone call. But who is that hurting? Yourself. 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 What's the famous F word that we like? Not the four letter word. <laughs> <laughs> the Focus. five letter F word. Focus. Okay. Say it louder, Robert. Focus. Where would you ever hear that? <laughs> right? Focus. F O C U S, right? Focus. Right? Today, just focus for an hour and a half, but I guarantee you, if you focus like this each and every day on yourself for a little bit, you'll get better. Just a little bit each day. It's like losing weight. Who's tired of weight loss commercials this month? <laughs> right? Yeah. Fair? My boy moves to Vegas. I said, what are you doing in Vegas? He goes, I'm going out there, and I'm going to be an actor. He was going to L.A., stopped in Vegas, never made to L.A. <laughs> and I said to him, what are you doing in Vegas? He goes, it's the easiest job in the world. Come on, it does. Uh, he says, I open up gyms. He's an engineer, but I a lot of money. I said, why do you open up gyms in LA or in uh, Las Vegas? He says, because everybody goes out to Vegas, gun ho, they're going to get in shape. What happens to people in Vegas? They move. They eat a lot. The, the average person that moves to Vegas only lives in Vegas for less than 30 days. So you see these Planet Fitnesses, I have buddies in a lot of Planet Fitnesses, lot of gyms. They get you to sign up for a year because they know the rate, they've, they've done the studies. 80, 90% of people will never go to the gym after the next month. And then they make it so cheap that you don't do what? You don't get rid of it. What's the average gym rate right now? 10 to 20 bucks, right? So my buddy said the average person does not come back to the gym after the first month. 
So that's why you see so many commercials. Nutrisystem, that's a local company, right? You don't see Nutrisystem commercials all year except what? Right. So we're not here to do a crash diet today. We're here to build you guys a business. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Is that a fair statement? Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, so no crash diets. All right, about me, some of you guys know me, some of you know, real quick. I sold real estate, typically sold 50, 60 houses a year myself. My team, small team, did 150 units a year. Um, the office now does around $250 million. We grow about 35% a year. That's double the industry average locally. Top 5% in the United States right now. Uh, it's rocking. Why I'm bringing that up to you, whatever office you work at, utilize your people in your office. Utilize the smart people. Utilize people who have been there. Just take and do what they do, and you'll become successful. Mike Doyle's smiling, right? Mike listens, right? I've talked to Mike, right? There's nothing new, right? It's the same <coughs> stuff. Just follow a successful person in this world. Do what they do, and you'll be successful. Look at your, look when you grew up. If you hung out with people who typically did bad things, what happened to you? <laughs> you typically did bad things, or you made some bad what? Choices. Bad choices. For me, what I realized is if I wanted to lose weight and I wanted to get in better shape and play tennis, I had to start quitting bad habits. Now we're going to lead into habits. What was my bad habits? Mm. Thursday night, go out with the boys, have a couple of drinks and dinner, not get drunk, go home, be home by 8, 9 o'clock with the family. Everything was cool. But what was happening the next day? Well, you were dragging a little bit. You were dragging. If you have two beers, three beers, right? Whatever it is, right? You're dragging. So what I realized if I want to lose weight, what did I have to do on Thursday nights? Yeah. Else. Schedule Five. Thursday night tennis at 9 o'clock. I'm talking about changing a habit. So I still went out with my friends and had dinner because I didn't want to cut off cold turkey and have them make fun of me and say, what happened to Jeremy? So instead, I played tennis at 9. I went out with them and had what? Water. Mm -hmm. Ate a salad, hung out with them, and played tennis. Eventually, do I hang out Thursday nights that often anymore? Mm -hmm. On the weekends, I started <laughs> scheduling tennis for what time? <clears throat> 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. So I had to go to bed when? 10. Early. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have, so what I'm saying is, whatever habits you guys have to have, what you are thinking right now, whatever habits you want to change, you got to start thinking about some things in your life that get you to do things that could not be that bad, but just lead you in the wrong direction on that habit. Is that a fair statement? Mm -hmm. All right. So, first part is very, very easy. Ever got a pen and paper? Yeah. It's a test. Question number one, write these down, we'll give the answers later, and let's examine each other. Who's your number one competition? Don't yell at the answer. Who's your number one competition? Number two, how often do you check email in a day? How often do you check email in a day? Number three, when do you eat dinner? Dave Gower, you get a pen? Here, got a pen? I got one. Anybody else need a pen? I could use one, sir. You run? Here. <laughs> My pen supply people are not here right now, so I think they're still on a closing. Anybody else need a pen? Pen of paper? Anybody? All right, question number three. When do you eat dinner? Can we do that one? Yeah. yeah. All right, four. number four. When do you go to bed? On average, when do you go to bed? <coughs> Five. What time do you get up? Paul, I know you get up early, right? We talk on Facebook, shoot messages, and yeah. Six. What time do you exercise? Or some type of form of relaxation. Number seven, what time do you get to work? What time do you get to work? Eight, what time do you eat lunch? I hope you eat lunch, but I find a lot of people try to skip lunch. Nine, when do you lead generate? When are you only focused on lead generation? And if it's sporadic through the day, be honest with yourself and say that. If you don't have a block time, then answer sporadic. Just don't ask me how to spell that. All right, what's the next one? Ten, do you multitask? Are you a good multitasker?
11. Who holds you accountable? Number 12, how often do you track your habits? Wow. <laughs> Who is this? Hello. <laughs> is that you, Gizmondi or Scotty J? Oh, damn. <laughs> uh, is that someone for that question? Oh, fair one. I didn't hear my that. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> what was number 12, John? <laughs> how, how, how do you track, do you track your habits? How do you track them? Do you track your habits? 13. How often do you educate yourself? Last question. Million dollar question. Why do you why do you do this? Why do you do it? Why do you do all this? All these habits. Why is it important to you? All these habits. All right, trivia question for CD. Who said this quote? Jim Conley, you cannot answer this. <coughs> the last person to invest in herself is typically ourselves. We typically are the last people to invest in ourselves. A famous person said we should invest in ourselves. The first thing we should do as a human being is invest in ourselves. Who's that person? Oh, wow. Huh? Vince Lombardi? That's a good one. I like that. Nope. Vince Lombardi. Nope. Steve Jobs. Ding, 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 ding. We got, nope. Oh, very close. No. Right? Jim? Jim? Gates? Get closer. Warren Buffett. Who's Warren Buffett? Warren Buffett. Who's Warren Buffett? Right? Who's Warren Buffett, guys? So listen to this. Listen to what you just said. Most successful investor in the world. Actually not true. I thought the same thing. He is one of the most successful people. What's the book everybody should be reading right now? Jim? Money Master of the Game. Say louder. Money Master of the Game. Money Master of the Game. If you're not reading this book in 2015, you missed the book, right? Mm -hmm. Money Master of the Game. Who wrote it? Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins gets people besides Warren Buffett to speak to you. What's up, Ian? To speak to you and to actually get you guys um, to understand all the other people who have a lot of money in this world and how they think. Is that fair? Yeah. Guys' names that you typically don't hear of. Ray Dalio? Huh? Dalio. Dalio. Very, very successful people. Carl Icahn. Have you guys heard of Carl Icahn? And there's some other people in this book. It's very, very good. And if you ever are like me, and you want to binge on something kind of silly, and you want to get back on the normal track, just pick up the book and read it for a little bit, and it'll get you thinking better. Because as human beings, we get off track, we say, I need this, I need this, I need this. You go buy it, and you realize you really didn't need it. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. So this book will keep you on track on building good habits. So Money Master the Game, more uh, Tony Robbins. All right. So check this out. What do you guys invest in? What do you guys invest in? Right now, in 2015, what's your plans? How are you going to make money? How, what are you going to invest in? Yell them out. Real estate. Real estate. You're going to buy houses. That's a fair one. Assistant. Assistant. Okay. Marketing. Marketing. Recruiting. Anybody else? Systems. Systems. Recruiting. Lead generation. Lead generation. But where are you going to put money? I want money things. We said house. We Stock said market. assistant. Stock market. Stock market. That's a good one. What else? Myself. Help. Huh? IRA. 401k, IRAs. What else? The mattress. The mattress? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you always have that money in the mattress. <laughs> in building a future for ourselves. Future. Savings, 401ks, houses, lots. But the one thing that most people don't invest in is what? Education. So Education's one. Yeah. They don't invest in themselves. Watch this. Everybody in this room want to have an assistant or have someone to help them grow their business? Raise your hand. Watch this. How many people <coughs> in this room have an assistant? Check this out. Did you guys notice that? Four people out of the whole group raised their hand, and this group's investing themselves in this topic, so I'm cool. I'm glad you guys are coming. We can take this to the next level and get you guys assistance, right? Why don't people let go 
and let other people help them. Control. That's one answer. You hear it say it louder. They think they can do it better themselves. They think they can do it better themselves. What's another thing? Control. Ooh. Marisa, did you ever hear of those ones? I didn't hear. I heard control them. issues. <laughs> Right? Control issues, right? Some people have control issues. They yeah. don't want to spend the money. They don't want to spend the money. That's a good one. I think it's a great and one. Is there a fear of um, you know, changing the way they do things? It's fear. Mm -hmm. Fear of changing, yep. I think they're going to go somewhere else. What's another one? That's a good one. This fear of letting the other person down if you don't succeed. Yes. Yeah. Feel responsible. So, listen to the last one. I'm actually starting to learn that more people fear this one, what you just said. Because they fear that they don't have enough work mm -hmm. for the person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got in the game of 03, flipping houses, 05, 06 full time. I still to the day, and I could be wrong, I don't know anybody that has let an assistant go that was doing the right things. Now I've heard of people letting an assistant go who never had something set up correctly and didn't have systems because they weren't prepared. But a person who's productive and they're rolling and they have a smart business, they typically don't let an assistant go in real estate. Why? They need him. Wrong. Anybody go to the doctor's office? Yes. Mm -hmm. They have assistants? Yes. Yeah. How often have you gone to the doctor's office and walked in the front door and there's the doctor? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Doc, what's up? <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm doing an exam, Jeremy. I'll be right with you. Can you do me a favor? Can you sign in? I'll be over the computer a real second and get you in. Fair? Mm -hmm. Right? How often have you seen a doctor's office not have a person at the front desk? Never, never. If you do, please run. Right? <laughs> Fair statement. They invest in themselves, right? So what we're going to talk about next is the third part, good habits versus bad habits. Okay? Why don't you guys do a shout out. What's a good habit that you should be working on in 2015? And write them down, and then you can at the end say, I'm going to work on these one or two habits to change. I want to see what you guys think. I know what good and bad habits are. Let's see what you think. What's a good habit you need to have? A schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's write that one down on the good side. Let's start with the goods. Then we'll go to the negatives. What's another one? Let's try to get like five. Systems. Systems. A plan. Just a plan. We need your help to, to stay back. There's going to be five of them. What's, a, what's another one? They're all good. Think about yourself. Education. Education, what's the most important thing? I think most human beings do not take advantage of. Health? Say it louder. Health? Health. Hey listen, I could die tonight. I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. Health is the most important thing that we need to worry about as human beings. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are five good ones. Bad ones. Let's talk about some bad ones. What's five bad ones? Procrastinating. What do you think? Yeah. Scheduling, well, not scheduling, <laughs> poor not scheduling, poor time management. Put poor time management. That's a fair one. Yep. What's the second one? Procrastinating. Procrastinating. Eating too late. Eating too late. I've heard that word too much. Well, it could be too much, but I find out that most of the time it's just people eating too late. <coughs> we'll, we'll talk about that. Eating the wrong things, things too. Not eating the wrong things. things too, but just eating later. Yep. Disor so. like disorganized, being disorganized. Being disorganized, I think what was the one you said? Poor time management. Poor time management, I think that goes right with it. I think you're right. What's another one? How many do we got? Three? Yeah. Anybody, who else? Nikki, what, what's up? What's a fourth? What's a bad habit? It's negative what you think. Starts with an E. Ooh. Email. Email. <laughs> <laughs> who actually makes funny email? Trivia question number two. Who said email was actually a good thing? but a very bad thing. What owner of what company? Steve Jobs said that? Yeah. Bill Gates. It was Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. <laughs> I can't remember. It's one of the two, so if, as long as you said one of the two. Right? What's another one? What number are we up to? Spending your commission before you have it. Spending your commission before you have it. <laughs> Stop that a long time ago. Was dang taxes. Dang taxes. Right? Smartest thing I ever saw realtors do is set up two bank accounts. Mm -hmm. Come in, take the money out, put it in a second bank, right? You do, right, Paul? Yeah. All my life, I have an account that sits on me, so I have no choice. Yeah. <laughs> I was bad at the beginning, man. I'd get my checks, and then I would get this, you know, what I owe at the end of the year. I'm like, I knew it was coming. 
And I always had it, but I was scrambling. And I was like, why put the stress on myself? Just start paying it quarterly. He goes, it doesn't take rockets. But he said, I said, what percent of rotors do it the way I'm doing it? Yeah. Probably 80, 90%. Yeah. He's like, I wish they would do the two bank accounts. Too simple with online banking. So when you get a check comes in, X percent just goes to another bank account. Smart. Yeah. Smart. Cool. What's another one? We own four or five bad habits? Four. 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 Give me one more. Oh, like being late? Huh? Being late. I guess it's time. Schedule. Yeah, scheduling time management. Um, not being prepared, so that is like drama du jour, like not timing things out. Preparation. Right, like the morning of, you know, an appointment to show a buyer, you don't have anything printed out and your printer breaks down. Yep. There's no ink and there's, you have to. What day did I start preparing for this? Sundays. Uh, right. two. Sunday nights are your preparation, right? right? So this has been ready since Sunday. If I need to give the presentation Monday, I would have been ready, right? I would try to be ready Friday in case any problems come up. What time did Tom Brady go on the field on Sunday? Tell me the game. <laughs> the game was six. Six, six thirty, right? What time do you guys mm -hmm. go to the field? I didn't realize these guys how early went to the field. About three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, he's like lunch shot. Even the Sixers, you yeah. know, let's face it, they're getting better, but you know, they're yeah. they're, they're building. You know, don't diss them yet. They, I mean, the guys get there. I, I went there recently, and they were lifting weights and exercising around four thirty-five for a seven thirty game. I didn't realize there's two shoot arounds in basketball. Did you guys realize that? Mm-hmm. There's the pre-shoot around before everybody gets there, most people, and then there's a shoot around when people get there, right? To get what? Warmed up. Warmed up. Warmed up. get what? Prepared. Warmed up. Prepared. Focused. Yep, prepared. Exactly right. Yep. So let's work on those first five habits that are good, okay? So who wants to learn good habits that successful agents do? Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yes? All right, so let's talk about those habits that we just talked about. So what was the first good habit? Scheduling. Who's having a challenge with scheduling? Well, scheduling. Hey, uh, Henry, can you edit this? Uh, <laughs> you'll be able to. <laughs> All right, let's raise your hands again. Who's having a challenge with scheduling? Because watch, I'll prove you wrong. Okay, now I'm starting okay. to see the truth. Who in your schedule right now has an hour time slot every day for personal? Good. Couple, good. Who has a time slot every day for either lead generation or follow-up? Good. Who has a time slot in there for just administrative work? Okay. So you guys see the difference? How many, how many percent do you guys think have that? You guys saw it, huh? Very small. Very small. Couple percent. So when I asked that first question, why do you think most people didn't raise their hands? Because you make one, you just don't keep it. Right. So what happens? Why don't you think more people keep a schedule? Discipline. Discipline. Or the lack of. Well, what was my text to you last night, Henry? Uh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> You're my accountable partner on this. You're right. Uh, Pepsis. You, so you, I you cut broken. out soda, and then over the holidays, I got back into drinking more soda than I want to drink, right? Yeah. So Henry helped me cut it out before, and I said, how much is it, $10 every time I drink a soda, or it's 20 bucks? 20 this bucks. This time I did 10 bucks. 10 bucks. I gotta go back down to drinking two a week, and then I'll cut down the one, and then I'll be fine, cut out. I drink a lot of water, but next thing you know, you don't realize it's a compound effect. Over the holidays, you're having soda, and then for lunch, instead of ordering a water with a, a meal, what are you ordering? Soda. 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 And I don't know about you guys, but soda, I get kicked in around 2 o'clock, it wakes me up. Because the sugar kicks in, right? Why did I go off on that? <laughs> you know, Focused. Focus. Discipline. Schedule. Discipline. Discipline schedule, okay? No, the reason why I said that, someone has to keep you what? Accountable. Accountable. All right. So think about this. This is the second part of this I want to talk to you guys about today. Who in your life is holding you accountable? Think about this. Because yourself, you won't hold yourself accountable. I mean, for me personally, this has been an issue forever. But yeah. um, like, I knew that my um, like my I had a mental block, you know, right. and I started seeing a therapist. And now I'm account. He he says, "How are you doing?" You know, and my assistant she keeps me accountable. 
But like forever, I was afraid to say, I have ADHD, I can't focus on anything. Yep. That's my problem, you yep. know? So I now I know what my problem is, and now I know how to deal with that problem. So a lot of this mental focus, I mean, it's like how I think about it. So if a person wants to change, they have to realize what? What the problem the is. Problem. What the problem is. Uh -huh. If someone wants to quit anything in their life, they have to come to the conclusion, why don't most people like to look in the mirror? Not well, what you look like, but why don't they look in the mirror? Afraid of what they're going to find. Right. So, let me give you another tip about that. So, I actually used to give magnets out. Does anybody give magnets out with your picture on it? Uh, not anymore. Mm -hmm. Huh? Not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. Same thing happened to me. I, like, I was putting my picture on my business card, and a guy called me up one day and thanked me. I said, for what? He goes, I lost 20 pounds. Because of you. He <laughs> says, because my phone calls, I've been calling you, and I've been bugging you for your listing. He said, no. That business card with the magnet on, he stuck on the refrigerator, the picture of you. Every time I went to the refrigerator, I turned around and left. And I had to look at you. Pull up, bump, All right, I'll keep my name. All right, so what's the second thing on habits? What's the second bad habit? We're a good habit. We're talking about good habits. What's the second one? We're systems. 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 Who needs help on systems? All right, so today at 1 o'clock, I've learned, you go to a presentation, you go to an event, you get all pumped up, you go back to the office, and what do you do? I forget everything you heard. Yeah, you don't do anything with it, right? Check your emails. So two things I'd recommend about today I've learned differently. Before you leave, pull out your phone and put it in your phone that you're going to work on this by this date and put a bet with me. Okay? I bet everybody. We had a manager's meeting every day. They couldn't believe how many bets I made. Because if you don't bet something, what happens? No consequence. No consequence, right? So what happens? Ignore it. Ignore it. You just keep on doing the same habits. How much is a bet? Huh? So bets typically, you got to make a little pain. You'll do 100 bucks, and we donate it to a nonprofit or a guy or someone that we need, need to know that needs help. We do it constantly, right, Des? You paid it. Phil paid it. I pay it. If you don't pay it, what happens? You didn't, you didn't push yourself hard enough. See, if you don't lose a bet, you just didn't do what? Challenge yourself. You didn't challenge yourself enough. <clears throat> so whatever it is on a personal level or business level, I highly recommend you guys challenging yourself to make a bet, and I'll be your accountability partner. Because if you hold it with yourself, what happens? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Gizmondi, where are you at? Did you get your business plan done? Yeah. And if you didn't, what happened? You would have cashed my check. <laughs> <laughs> and then, did you give me the check when? Like a week before whatever my deadline was. Why did you give me the check a week before the deadline? To give me time to do my business plan. And then if you waited and you didn't do it, it would have been harder to give the check. So you gave the check up front, so it got you more what? Yeah, I, I, it gave me an opportunity to just put it in the calendar, and I knew what the deadline was, and if I didn't do it, I lost the check, and I wouldn't have been mad about it. Well, I would have been mad, but I wouldn't have been happy. Yeah. Yeah, Nikki, do we have a bet for today? I have it in my phone, but I didn't look yet. Do we have a bet for your plan? But you got it done, right? We put a date, right? Today at 1 o'clock. The reason why I did this event today at 1 o'clock back at the office, anybody wants to come back, it's for business planning, goal setting, is I know if we don't do it now, what's going to happen? Not at keep all. putting it off. You keep on putting it off. Yeah. What I've learned is it's got to be really, really simple. Simple, simple, simple. I'll give you an example. Here's mine. Personal. Lose 10 more pounds. I lost 25 last year. I'll lose 10 more. That's number one. Number two, within two years, I'll be a 5 0 tennis player. Right now, I'm a 4 5. I was a 4 last year. Five would be like a scratch golfer. Okay? That's my two personal. Third is I need to save money for a Lexus college fund, $2,700 a month. For a wedding in college, that's what it's going to cost, $70,000 a year for college back then, or in the future, excuse me. Hopefully someone gets this fixed with the college because it's out of control, right? And in a wedding, those are my three personal goals. That's it. If I get to something else in 2015, what is it? Bonus, right? So really think about that. Keep it simple. Three personal, three business, and what will happen? You'll do it. Who has a 10 or 20 page business plan? What companies, not no, I say companies, what coaching companies or what people on the internet or whatever, they typically give out a what? Three pager. Huh? Three, five page. 10, 20 business. page business plan. Well, what happens with them? They trash. Nothing. Does anybody have one? I might have one page. Good. <coughs> one page, put it up right where? 
Right in front of my... Right in front of your desk. Look at it every day. You guys see my motivational board, right? It's right in front of me. Lexus College Fund, pay down houses, and uh, I don't have tennis up there because that one's changed since I built the board. I probably should put tennis up there, right? So think about that. Put a board, keep it in front of you. If you don't have it in front of you, what happens? Nothing. Out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind. Keep it simple. What's the next one? What's the next good habit? Health. Health. Who's working out in the morning? <clears throat> Who's meditating? Who's doing something in the morning? Okay. So here's what I've learned about this one. Who hates going to the gym? Right? It's stupid. I hate it. It, it, it. Honestly, it's stupid. You go to the gym, you got the muscle bound dudes looking at themselves in the mirror. Right? <laughs> right? You know, everybody knows them. Then you've got other people that are working out and are distracted because they're on their phones doing something else. And then there's the people in the middle who are trying to work out and trying to get some exercise. Okay. But who are you working out against? How do we do that? Do we hold ourselves very accountable as humans? Mm -hmm. Like when we, talk, when we talked about earlier investing in your health, that's what I had to do this year. Like, so I had to pay money to somebody. Like I needed somebody to, to be held accountable to. So I get a text every day. Yep. I mean, doing A, B, and C. Because I can't do it myself. I can't do a lot of things myself. Like most people can't. I'd say 98% of people can't. We need help. But I've been doing amazing with my health. It's been great. I feel amazing. Eating better? Yeah. 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 Right? It's amazing. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. What's the next one? Education. education. Who's educating himself each day? Okay. This one's typically low. Okay. It's normal. Why? What, what's education? Please don't say what it is. Once you've gotten the grade every year or you hit that peak, whatever you know you you're told is the level that you need to be at, you don't need to continue moving forward. You've already reached the end of your goal. And that's yeah. never the truth. Never the truth. Give me some examples of education. Coaching. Coaching, what else? Reading. Reading. Yeah. Reading what? Books. 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 Something something, something on your industry. Something pointed, yes. Okay. Because if you're reading a book about knights and dragons. That's relaxation. That's cool. You should right. be doing that too. But if you want to invest in yourself, you would be reading something that's going to make yourself better. Tony, what's another thing that you do for education? Meet with people. Who watches the news? Yeah. Right? The news keeps you up to date, but is the news really educating on making yourself better? Not really. It really not. makes yourself angry. Yeah. I tried watching a little bit yesterday on Apple TV on Bloomberg because I'm. My wife's company is based out of Switzerland, and I honestly don't understand the difference between the euro and the franc until the last two days. I had to read up about it, why our company was going to high freeze, and now I understand. But I read it through Bloomberg. Holy moly, there's a bunch of negative crap on TV, right? But on Apple TV, anybody have Apple TV? For 80, 90 bucks, you can literally pick whatever videos you want to watch and weed through it. And if it already happened in the day, you can go back and watch whatever you want to watch. So I have to watch everything. I got to watch the guy who created the drone. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So you can pick what you want to watch and what you don't want to watch. I highly recommend it. Apple TV, hook it up to your TV. It's easy. I can say 90 bucks, something like that. What's another one? What was the last one? YouTube. YouTube? Videos. Watch YouTube on videos. I got my blog. There's many blogs. Mine's at jeremybowers.com. All I do is take other people's information, put on it, and I put my stuff on it. YouTube, just type the word motivation, create a page, watch that. All right, let's go to bad habits. What's some bad habits? Eating late. Huh? Eating late. All right, watch this survey. You guys ready for a survey? You guys like surveys? I am calling you today, Jeremy Bowers. I'd like to do a survey. What do we do with that phone? Click. Yeah, click or you give it to your daughter and she has a full blown conversation with you. <laughs> right? So, survey. How many people eat after 7 o'clock here? Okay. Watch this. Everybody look around. Everybody raise your hand. Be honest. Look at this. After 7 o'clock. Okay? Why? Get in. Say it louder. Get in. As an industry, right? Our, our, our habits are tough because you get in when? 37. Yeah, you're late, right? When should you be eating? Five, six, seven, six, seven. So let me give you an idea. Who has trouble? Watch this. Raise your hand if you have trouble getting up early by 6.30 in the morning and you eat after 7. Raise your hand. Did you guys notice the number? Why is that? Say it louder. If 
body's trained, you train your body. You train your body to eat late, so then it actually is eating the foods, and then what's kicking in later on? Your sugars, right? They're kicking in at later on. So they're typically, people are typically eating after seven or going to bed at 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? And what you'll find at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, you'll still be working, you're watching TV, but you start doing some stuff that's just kind of like blah, because you're just going through the motions. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. So I met a guy one time told me I think this is not true. Jeremy, I'm a night person. I've always been a night person. I cram for tests. I was always a night person. Stayed up late. I have trouble getting up in the morning. Who believes in that? It's okay if you do. Okay, right? Go train your body. You gotta change, right? So in my household, my dad said, listen, Jer, I don't care if you go out and party. I don't care what you do at night, just don't drive. But when you get up in the morning, you're gonna get up and go to the pharmacy. If you don't, you can't go out at night. So I had to train myself to start doing what? Getting up. Doesn't matter what the heck you did in high school, you had to get back up. So it trained your body to do what? So I watched some of my cousins. They slept in a lot, right? Still got a lot of work done, but they slept in. Are they more of a night person or are they more of a morning person? Night person. Night person, because they just trained their body to do that. So I've changed people and helped change people who got up at 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and they get to work at noon because this business, you can do that. You work from noon to when? Eight or nine. Eight or nine. <clears throat> what time do you used to get up? Well, that's the thing. Like, I used to be horrible in the toilet at like waking up whenever, whether yeah. I was hungover or not. <laughs> but um, like, it doesn't have to be instant. You just have to work on it. Just chip time. away, dude. Yeah. Just chip away. Like, I didn't wake minutes. up like at six o'clock in the morning all of a sudden. I mean, it was ten, then it was nine thirty, then it was nine. You know, we're around those times. But I got better and better and better. Like, it, you know, the year went. You just got to be constantly remind yourself that. What's my goal here? Yeah. So guys, million millionaires. When do they get up by? Five, 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 five. I thought that. Yeah. Uh, I thought so. Eight or thirty. No, it's by six twenty. I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. So by six twenty, they're up and they're rocking and rolling. That's that. That's in the Tony Robbins book. What time do they go to sleep? They go to sleep right there. They actually get more sleep. So what I've learned is, if you can really work on your night before, not the day, you can improve your habits. What do most people try to do? Just get up early. Yeah, I see it in the office, man. I hate seeing someone's like, I'm coming in, I'm fired up, I'm getting in here at X time. I know they're gonna burn out within a week. I don't say anything. I tell them it, but they have to, you know, they have to do it themselves. I said you're focusing on the wrong thing. You need to start focusing on like if someone says I want to quit drinking, you can't focus on quit drinking. You have to focus on why you want to quit drinking. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. That's the start. So when you're going to bed, you have to realize why you want to go to bed earlier. So what it is, is you have to literally get rid of that phone by like 8 o'clock. Just get rid of it, set it down, 9 o'clock, somewhere in that range. And then you have to start just relaxing and doing things that are boring, like reading a book and getting yourself to relax instead of your brain's doing what? Wired. You know, it's wired yeah. up. The news, things like that, a lot of people will get their brains keep on going. So I would recommend is eating by 6.30. Now listen, if you have an appointment at 6 o'clock, how do you eat by 6.30? It's a tough one. So if I get on the train before I go home, we quit eating, you know, some people don't like this, but we like it, it works. It's, we don't eat dinner that much together. My wife and my daughter will eat. I'll eat with them once in a while, or I'll come home and sit down and not eat. Because by the time I get home, I got a 45 minute ride home right on the train. By the time I get home, they already ate. I'd have to be leaving the office at 3.30 eat dinner with them. But what has happened is, I've been healthier, my wife's been healthier, my daughter's been healthier, I eat on the weekends with them. During the week I might eat one day a week with them, right? I start eating by the time I get on the train, so by the time I get home, what's happening? You're already starting to metabolize. Yep, it's starting to metabolize. The body's starting to roll. So you're going to worry about the night before. Go on the bed, try to get in bed by 10 o'clock, and if you want to go to sleep, you're going to start chipping away 15 minutes. So if you're an 11 o'clock person or a 12 o'clock person, don't all of a sudden try to go to sleep an hour earlier. Try to go to sleep 15 minutes earlier. Why? Well, because you got to reset it to goals. Correct. Just chip away, chip away. Next thing you'll notice is what? Who's done this? Yeah. Who started to go to bed earlier or getting up earlier? Okay. How did you do it, Scotty? I just started going to bed earlier and it got easier. 
How about the gym? Is it easier to go to the gym at night or in the morning? In the morning, too. Right? Get it out of the way. If you wake up in the morning and you work out before you go to work, how do you feel? A lot of energy. Right? So much better. Do you have to do it every day? No. no. I didn't do it today. I'm exhausted by being up with my door last night. So I didn't push myself to go do it. I knew I'd be shot, right, to get up even earlier. I slept with her because she was sick, and then I got up and left and came. Now tomorrow I'll do what? Just work out. Just work out three, four days a week. You don't need to do it every day, right? Is that fair? Anybody else? How would anybody else start going to bed earlier? Because this is the biggest thing. If you want to change habits, it's not what you do today. It's what you did when. Yes. Whoever had cocktails in her life and that night, like, you know what? I'm going out having drinks tonight. I don't give a crap. I got nothing to do. And then the next day, you drag. I'm the only one? <laughs> right? Because the next day is the, is the result, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Sure. Next two days, depends how much you drink. <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. So, I'm going to give you the answers to those 14 questions. So, question number one. <clears throat> Phil, can you ask him to turn the heat up more? I feel like we're in our building, these old buildings, right? It's hot here. It's hot here. It's hot here. Really I no, like it's, it's not. No? Oh. Comfortable. Don't ask her, Marisa, don't ask you. <laughs> they used to they wear winter coats in the summer. <laughs> All right. Shout out the answer. Who's your number one competition? Yourself. Yourself. Good. Number two. How often? I was at an event recently. Oh, you guys were there. Anybody go to the Tom Ferry event? They go, who's your, who's your number one competition? A whole bunch of people have said, Mike McCann. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you check your email in a day? This is probably the number two tab challenge on habits. Number one is going to bed, eating right. Number two is this one. How often do you check your email? Be honest. Constant. Who else? Three, four times. Who else? Who's constant? Raise your hand. Oh, I, right. You know what I just realized by sitting in here is, I set up my team meeting today after this, <coughs> specifically because I knew we'd learn a lot today. Right. But um, I realized my assistant can do that. Yep. She can look at that, and if something's important, she can look at that. I'll tell you. Out. So here's a cool thing. Who's more, who, here's the number one reason why people check email too much. They're afraid to miss something important. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on your phone, if you have an iPhone, there's apps, and every phone doesn't matter. There's a part in your phone that fixes this issue if you want to change. It's called VIP. You add the person as a VIP in your phone. So you go to contacts, and then there's a button. You click in the contact, and you can add them as a VIP. If you do that, you can set up, set up a special ding. And when an email comes in from that VIP, it alerts you. So what I used to do when I was selling real estate, anybody decent size, I'd set them up as a VIP alert, and then it would come into my phone and would ding. I had Zerpal, you guys ever hear Zerpal? I had them as buyer leads. If anything at X price came into Zerpal, it would ding my phone to give me a heads up because I knew I had to reply when. Right away. Otherwise, I'd lose it. How did this help you or help me stay focused by doing that? It eliminated a lot of the junk. Yeah. Or I had to give my phone to Marisa, my old assistant back then, and she held it originally when we lead generated. So what happened was, we're like, we can't give up our phone. We're calling people. They're going to call us back. If they call us back during prospecting, what's going to happen? She picked up the phone, right? We were able to lead generate for a couple hours. Why? Nobody important okay. called. Yep. Who's the most important person to have your calendar? This is a crazy question. <laughs> your significant other, whoever it is, should have your calendar. Whoever's in your life that is talks to you needs to have your calendar. Why? They can plan order. They know when to call. They know when to call. Where's my calendar? Is it on my door? Refrigerator door. Mine's on my door in the office, right? So you guys know where I'm at, know when I'm available, right? And if it's an emergency, you can call me. If you teach your significant other when it's an only emergency time, they'll typically do what? 
wait until that That's time. right. If you told your people, listen, you know, your friends, family, cousins, whoever, Ian, whoever you're, you're in your life that talks to you a decent amount, if you told them, listen, three days a week from 9 to 12, it's got to be an emergency if you call me at this time because I'm need to generate. So I told my dad, my brother, my mother. My mother thought it was weird because she's a teacher. She's like, I don't get this, right? She's like, if I need you, I need you, right? Because <laughs> she can do it with the students, right? She's, you know, running it. And then uh, my wife, my wife's in sales. She got it, right? Try it. We'll see. You know, start changing your life because you'll be able to take control, take charge, right? Huh? And if it's an emergency, what happens? Yeah, they'll call twice. Call twice if it's important. All right, what number was that? Email. All right, so how many times the email should you check a day? Nikki, you should know this answer. Tommy, how many times? Three. Huh? Three. Three. How do you get down to three? Do not leave today and start only checking your email three times a day if you check it a lot because you'll go nuts. <laughs> check it seven times, check it five times, get down to three. And the only way you can do it is you should have a notepad and keep track each day. <laughs> I didn't lose anything out of it by doing it. Um, in my office, my agents know, do you guys mind my email all day? No. Have no. you lost an agent because of not uh, servicing you? Right? You need me, what happens? You're on it. Right? If it's an emergency, what do you do? Huh? Text or call me, right? I pick up the phone. Email, I check my email, I check it three times a day. We don't miss the vote on it. We don't miss deals because of it, right? It's all up here. So what are those times that you check in? So first thing in the morning before you start your day, do not get on email because you're getting off on the wrong track. That's like eating crappy food and going to the gym, right? It just doesn't work. It's counterproductive. And the first thing in the morning is the hardest thing to get drug for people. You have to look at your email real quick, scan it. Anything important, great. Hit it. If not, get out of it. I mean, I'm saying important, like the deal's not going to settle today. Besides that, get out of it. Get back to lunch. Then a, so your first email true check responding to people should be at noon or at one, depending on when you're going to eat. Here's what I've learned. If you go that route, you'll be more focused when you do email. Here's what most people do, and I notice this. They're walking, they're doing something, they're checking email, and then they're like, I'll get back to that later in the day, and what happens? They forget. They forget. If you, here's what I've learned from Buffett, or Gates said this in a book. They said, if you can't dedicate yourself to email, don't check it. If you can't dedicate yourself to go to the gym for 15 minutes or 30 minutes, don't do it. Right? Mm -hmm. Same thing as driving, right? Whatever you're doing, focus. Whatever you're doing, do it. I get that from my daughter. Dad, you might think it's cool to drive with one hand. You better drive a 10 and 2. <laughs> you got to focus. Right? And it's true. You don't think about it. As adults, we start doing things. Pick up the phone, doing this, text, whatever. So, question number three. Oh, so the answer: lunchtime, mid-afternoon, or dinner time, and before you go to bed. But like not right before you go to bed. I'm talking like Des, like six, seven o'clock, right? If you guys get an email at eight thirty, Ken, Paul, Scotty, Andrew, whoever back there, if you get an email at nine thirty at night, and you check it, what happens? You think you feel about it all night. Yeah. You get upset. Well, yeah. It's alive. And the next thing you know, you start going to bed a little bit later because everybody in this room are good people. And we can't relax. If you don't know about it, you, none of us in the room can fix an issue at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. What about leads that come in at night? So leads that come in at that night, you know, that's why you set them up on that VIP alert. But you have to have a closed well, like time. Leads, yeah. Like you have to have a closed time and an open time. This is a business decision you have to make. Doctor's office, they close and they open. And you have to make a decision in your habits in your life, which I'm in a good part of my life right now of peace and happiness, is I have a good balance. And you have to make a business decision. What do you want? Is it more money or is it more happiness? Uh, are you using these same rules with phone calls and text messages? Because yes. I've found recently, or at least the last year, year and a half, it's involved with I'm getting more texts than I am emails from people that are expecting a quick instant response. So what Ken just said, I'm glad you said this, Ken. It's a great, great comment. Here's what it is. When I learn with people, if we don't set their expectations up front, they'll take advantage of us. Mm -hmm. So when we had the team, I had a letter that went out. Right, Maurice? We had a letter. This is the times we're open. This is the times that we're closed. And this is how the team works. 
I didn't lose people because of it. I wasn't a jerk. Here's how it works. People liked it. They wanted to understand because they don't understand the business. So what I said to them in it was, what time hours were available? What I learned was most people took advantage of us if we responded at 930. So if you respond one time at 930 or 10 o'clock at night, what happens? They expect it. They expect it. As we talked about this before, right? As soon as you're that person that just whips back and texts constantly at them, what do they do? So I have a car salesman. This guy works at this Jeep dealership. I love him to death. I told him the other day, I said, quit responding to me. He said, why? I said, because I'm a nut about cars sometimes. I have a Jeep and may want to get a newer one because the lease is running out. I'll send him a text. He goes, I said, don't respond to me. He goes, but you sent me a text. I said, give me some time because I know if I send you a text, what's going to happen? Hits me right back. Hits me right back. Hits your bill. I said, because that's crazy. Never heard anybody say that to me. I said, watch your clients. The people you respond to right away, they'll typically send you some more sillier texts because they know you'll do what? Your response. So my texts are pretty silly to him about cars, engines, and you know, weird things. He's just like, dude, he doesn't say anything to me, but he's not helping me, right? <laughs> so, Ken, your answer. So, someone sending you a text at 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. If it's not settling the next day, it's not an emergency, it's actually, this is weird to say, it's better off to respond to him in the morning than that night, because if we get to him that night at 10 o'clock, all we're doing is a bad habit building so they can keep on asking you questions at 10 o'clock. Is that fair? Yeah. I don't know if anybody's worked with Mike McCann before, but you text or email that guy at any right point right. in the day yeah. and you get something back out. That's because he has a team and he has assistants. No. 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 Let me finish. No, everybody jump down my throat. So he has a team that does the majority of his work. Okay. So his job is smart. He's on the sales end. He's only re he's responding to you guys, and he only has a third of what you need to do. When you leverage yourself like that, you have a third of those things you can do. You can do that. Does that make sense? Like my golfer is a successful veterinarian. You text him, he'll text you back. You know, Steinbach Veterinary Hospital, right? But he has a surgeon, he has multiple assistants, he's got multiple technicians, he's got multiple doctors. And I asked him how, he's got the right systems. One thing you taught me is that um, a lot of times when you're getting emails and texts at night, if it's a problem, if you don't respond at that night by the morning, whatever that problem was, has worked itself out. So it's best to not so the, I get complaints once in a while in real estate. <laughs> once in a while, right? Well, you know, we worked together right before. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you know, so everybody gets complaints, good, bad, and the ugly. The majority of the time, if I get a complaint, which I rarely do, it's typically not what the person says. It's inflamed. There's some issues and some challenges. I typically do not call the person right away back. Why? Letting things die down a little bit. Let them cool down. Like mm -hmm. You're angry, you're getting your significant other, and next thing you know, you have a conversation. And the other day, my wife's packing up, and she says something to me, it triggers. I say something back to her. 15 minutes, we can't stay mad at her. 15 minutes later, she goes, We're idiots. I said, Yeah, we are. This is stupid. You know what I mean? But if we would have just waited a little bit, what would happen? It would have eased itself. So when they're a little heated, just wait a little bit and then call back. And it's typically better. I'm not telling you guys wait all day. But just give them a second to breathe, and they'll typically get better. Mm -hmm. So why are we going that route? What did you say? Because you said not to reply at night. And don't reply at night. Because all you're doing is trick. So here, check this out. When you reply at night at 10 o'clock, and you send something back, how often does that person get off the text? Mm -hmm. You reply back. You send me a text at 10 o'clock at night and ask a question. I send you an answer back. How often do you stop texting me back? Mm -hmm. They don't. The text keeps on going. Yeah. Right? They know you're up. They got you. Right? Is that fair? They got you. So for Tom and I, when we both first started selling real estate, it was literally, you know, we'd get ready for bed at 11 o'clock, and I'd say, did you call that person? And he'd be like, hey, don't talk about real estate. So we made a rule. It was 8 to 8. Smart. We don't answer phones. We don't look at the email. We don't 8 to 8. Margaret, the best thing we ever did in my life was have hours. Saturday morning, I didn't show houses anymore yeah. because my wife had a, a just She's a successful sales rep selling dental implants. But two people selling is tough. She said, Jerry, I need my time. I said, well, what's that? She goes, I need some time. I said, you know what? What are you going to do? Saturday mornings, it's your time. Gym, nails, whatever you want to do, you go do it. Every Saturday morning, I got Alexa. 
Saturday afternoon, I show houses. Sunday, I'm off. Okay? And I quit one day a week. Really, one day and a half week was the best thing I did. The production did not go down. It did what? Stabilize. It went up. Oh. Because when I was in it, I was what? I was more focused. So you should have hours, everybody in this room, in and out. It'll help you. Just a comment on that. I actually use that on my voicemail. So Smart. Yeah, people know, do not call me after 7.30. And they respect me for that. You know, they say, oh my goodness, it's 7.20. Let me make sure I call D, you know? So I've done that for years and never had an issue. Because if you if you answer the phone at 9.30 at night, what happens? They know that, you know, they can do that. Yeah. Exactly. So, Ken, I'm glad you brought that up. I think it's one of the biggest challenges on time management in real estate. And everybody in this room wants to service people, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to let a person down. You know time responses are important. Yeah. But most of that stuff that they send you guys can typically get dealt with. Next, Next morning. Next morning. Next morning. I sometimes will answer an email. Don't hit the send button until the next morning. <coughs> Phil showed me something about scheduling emails that go out at certain times. You can he showed me that's pretty cool. I don't do that. Yeah, that's nice. Because if you get it off your head, but it's not going to the next day, you're not going to have a response. I like it. Mm -hmm. All right, what question number are we on? Three. When do you go to bed? We answered that. You know, try to get in bed by 10.30. Five, what time do you get up? You know, if you guys are getting up 7, 8 o'clock now, whatever time it is, just chip away 15 minutes. 15, 15, and get to your time you want. For me right now, 5.45 is my time. If I get up at 5.45, I can work out. Get on the train, get Alexa the bus, get on the train, get to work, get my day, get out. Uh, what time do you exercise? Morning or evenings? Who, actually, who, who exercises in the evenings here? Not? All right. That's discipline. I give you guys credit. That's tough, right? The morning. It's a little bit easier if you can get up and going. At night, you got to be extremely focused. You had a whole day getting beat up. If you go to the gym at night, I get the credit. Um, what time do you get to work? Who gets to work by nine? By nine, that means leading up to so nine. You'll find that people who don't get to work by nine typically are working later and are typically more of a night person. If you want to nip that in the butt, if you get to work earlier, you get stuff done earlier, and then you'll get out of the office what? Earlier. earlier. What time do you guys eat lunch? Raise your hand. Who does not lunch this one? Be honest. Who does not eat lunch in here? You, I'm telling you. I bet you it's 20, 25% does, but I raise your hand. A lot of people don't eat lunch during the day and they'll snack or they just skip lunch. What happens your mid afternoon? You get dragged. You gotta get that food. Get out of the office. I, that's what I learned. Get out of the office, walk to get something. I quit coming to the Bellevue besides. Kind of get a little crappy downstairs. You know, I go to smaller places. But I'll get like sushi or something to go. But someone says to me one time, why are we walking over there? You quit going there. I started walking over to uh, Liberty, right? That two, three block work, just walking, gets me out, gets open to the cold air, and then gets me back in the office and more focused, right? Um, when do you lead generate? This is probably one of the biggest challenges. You guys agree in real estate? It is. Who wants to get rejected? Who hates talking to people? that they don't know, or calling their friends asking for business. All day. 98% of people say yes. The 2% that do, you're weird. <laughs> Fair? It's so, complex. Get it over with. Eat that frog. Everybody's heard that book, Eat That Frog. Brian Tracy, if you've not, I'd read it. Jimmy Kavosko at our company teaches it. Love the book. Love it. Read it. A lot. Get the biggest thing out of the day you want to do, don't want to do, lead generate, and go to the gym. And your life will change. Who holds you accountable? So today I'm going to do this for you. If you leave today and you want held accountable, I don't care what company you work for, hit me a message. Right now, if I'm holding you accountable, do I hold you accountable? Yes. Sky G, you got any issues with it? No. Nikki, you got any issues with accountability? Yeah. Jim, you send me a text on your numbers, I'll get back to you? Yeah. Right. I'll hold you accountable. Sharice, Jay, whoever else in the room, right? Yep. So whoever wants it, I'll do it. You want to text motivation text in the morning at seven o'clock? Hit me up. I'll wake your butt up. And <laughs> there's people in the room. Beverly's not here, and she couldn't make it today. Beverly made some very nice, very nice comments. Said, "Jared, I'm getting up earlier now." I said, "Why?" She goes, "That dang text." <laughs> she goes, "I needed it." And she was a, she was sold on being a night person. And it's typically something positive. Look at it for a couple of minutes and get rocking, right? Mistake in the morning, don't start doing other personal things in the morning, and then start working, because what happens? 
Yep. Don't start doing bills. Don't start cleaning the house. Don't start doing anything personal wise besides working out because you'll get to work at 10. Next thing you know, you'll be behind the eight ball all day. Um, what's the next one? Number 12. How do you track your habits? It's very simple. You should have a tracking sheet, a piece of paper every day, and write down what you're doing, what you're not doing. If you ever go to a weight loss competition or a weight loss uh, program where you go to the gym, what do they tell you to do? I weigh myself every day. And for the last year, year and a half, it's helped me keep my weight off because I weigh myself because it keeps me what? Focus. Focus. Other people don't weigh themselves, they just test it out by your clothes. Right? It's another way, right? It doesn't fit, you know, you need to lose weight. Uh, how often do you educate yourself? Daily. Daily. Hopefully. Why do you all do this? Okay. Here's where I'm going to lead into the next part. We're, uh, getting, we're done with habits, we're getting right into assistance. Who wants seven ways to change your habits? Who wants to know? All one piece of paper. I just lost three quarters of the room. <laughs> Let me ask that question again. Who wants to learn seven ways to change your habits? I do. I lost half the group. <laughs> I know. Guys in the back talking about Lord knows what. All right. Seven ways to change your habits. Raise your hand if you want to learn how to change your habits. All right, good. All right. Number one, write this down. What's your why? What's your motivation? What's your why? When you die, what do you want people to think of you? Right? I watched the movie last night, don't ask me how I got it, American Sniper. <laughs> I was at my father-in-law's house, my daughter goes to bed, and, and, uh, and, my, and uh, he goes, uh, I'm about to watch a movie. And I said, oh, what are you going to watch? He I'm watching American Sniper. I said, I don't even want to ask. <laughs> Anyways, I've watched it. Very good movie. It's very interesting how he wants to be thought of. And the American Sniper, if you don't watch it, I'm not going to tell you the whole thing, but I'm just going to tell you one thing that will help you see the movie is he talked about uh, not how many people he saved, excuse me, not how many people he saved, how many people he did not save. You would have thought he would have been happy about people he saved. He was addicted to how many people he didn't save. So my question to you guys is this, seven ways to change your habits. What do you want to be known for? What do you want to be known for? We only got one shot at this thing called life. And if you don't focus on these ways to change your habits, You'll continue to go through life like blah, right? Work, 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 work. Sit back. So number one, what is your why? What is your drive? Why the hell are you doing this? Why the heck do you work seven days a week in a freaking non-salary job? <coughs> no benefits. You just said it. <laughs> That's it. Right? Because we're crazy. Because we're crazy. <laughs> right? You got, there's got to be a reason why you do it. Number two, track it. Change it. If you don't track it, you won't change it. Number three, our famous F word that we throw around the office a lot, we swear, focus. If you guys want to change something, if you just, I've learned this, it's pretty cool. Just work on one thing at a time. I try to get good at golf and tennis, I can't. I focus on tennis more than I do golf right now, and I'm okay with that because I want to get better at that. If you think about your listening presentation, buyer presentation, work on one thing at a time. The first thing you really should work on is your bedtime, eating habits. And that will start leading to working out. That will start leading into going to the office earlier. That will start leading into lead generation. That will start eating lunch better. The first thing you really should work on is your night before. Number four, who multitasks? Who's a good multitasker? I want to meet you. Raise your hand. <laughs> Raise your hand. Right. Double-edged sword, isn't it? I'm a horrible multitasker because I forget things. I only can work on one or two things at a time I forget. Multitasking is not good, right? That's a hard one. So if you start focusing and start just doing one thing at a time, it's a lot better. Number five, hire people. We're going to lead into hiring people. Number six, they typically have an accountability partner. What I've learned is millionaires and people like that, they have someone else that's holding them accountable. I think they would, but they do. And number seven, the right atmosphere. You gotta be around people who want to grow. Anybody got paper? Yeah. Don't do that. Alright. 
Who wants to learn how to hire help? That was kind of a crappy response. Come on. Yes. Who wants to hire help? Yes. yes. Hey. All right, that is appropriate. So the, the helps, the habits. What did you guys learn about the habits? We're going to go into hire help. What did you learn? Make a plan. Let everybody yell at once. Make a plan. What's another thing? Systems. Systems. What else? Pull in the back. Help. Or pay them. Consistency help. is one, too. Like help. Being consistent. Being consistent. On anything, right? Yeah. Do many things one at a time. Don't. Yeah. Yeah. What's another one? Track and change. Track and change. Schedule. Schedule. What's the most important one? No one mentioned it. Three word, three letter words or the W. Why? You have to realize why you want to do it. You want to start to go to church more, you want to start, you know, have a better relationship, you have to understand why. So you don't understand why. Right? Who got educated by someone in your life and you're like, I don't want to listen to it. You look back and you're like, you know what, dang it, they were right. Yeah. I think about it. Like my dad, he drove me nuts on some of the stuff we used to do together. And I look back now, I was like, dang it, he was building some good what? Habits. Habits. Until I found out years later that he'd take me out in the woods, I'd be freezing my butt off and I'd be hunting. <laughs> no disrespect to anybody here at Hunts, I didn't like it. It was freezing cold in western Pennsylvania. It was around my birthday for buck season. I didn't want to be outside freezing my butt off. So I typically didn't have bullets with me. <laughs> I just went out to please my dad. Two years ago, I talked to my dad. I said, Dad, I said, you know, all these years we hunted together, it wasn't fun. He goes, yeah, I hated it. <laughs> I said, you hated it? He said, yeah, I did it for you. I said, I didn't do it for me. I did it for you. <laughs> that was a guy who built good habits. And seriously, think about parents, right? You guys had some good, I hope they had some good parenting experiences or friends. They built some good habits. Some people built bad habits for you, right? Yeah, you can think of the people that said, oh, no, don't worry about that, or what's the use, or it's not for you. It's not for you. What's not for you? <laughs> At the end of the day, 70% of it's up here, right? 70%. It's good to look back in. I think agree. Oh, I'm sorry. The reason why I come back here every time is because like, I started my career, basically started to learn a lot here, called yep. a banker. And then went to boot camp, and um, you came and replaced Rachel. Got to know Carol, and then I heard all these great things, and I just couldn't do it. And I come back because I like to, you know, you were that guy. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's up here now, right? Yeah, you're the same mindset. person. Yeah. It's all up here, it's all in your mind. He says every single person in here can change today. It's up to who? Okay. You come listen to me every single day. But until you decide, damn it, I want to do this, I'm going to make some serious money in 2015, or I'm going to have a more balanced life. So here's what people get messed up on success. Success is making money, but it's not always about making money. It's typically what? Being happy. Being happy. Having a balanced life. It's not all about money. It's more about having a balanced life, being healthy and happy. If you build good habits, money will come. Right. I was in Toronto over the holidays and there's a friend who's starting a new business and I started talking to her about it and she and right from the beginning she said, Oh my god, you're all business. I was coaching her without even thinking about what what I was it's saying or doing because I walked the walk it's and great and, right. How's your business doing? Great. Right? Yeah. But you can't put your finger back on one thing, can you? It's the compound of value. It's a marathon. Alex, you're a runner, right? It's a, the Henry's a runner. It's a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. So we're going to get into now on assistance, and then we're fine. Who wants to hire an assistant, or who wants to share an assistant? Yes. Me. Right. Marisa, you and I used to work together, so I wanted you to come down today, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Number one, why do we need one? Write this down. Why do we need assistance? If you don't write this down, we'll keep on doing the same thing over and over. Why do I need help? Huh? Not enough hours in the day. That's number one. Because we're only good at X amount of things, and other people are good at other things. We're not all good at everything. Would you guys agree? Yep. Why does a doctor not take your paperwork? Why does, a, <laughs> why, does a, why does a heart doctor not work on your leg? He's not a good doctor on your leg, right? He knows the heart, right? Certain people know certain things are very good at those things, and that's where you need to leverage yourself. 
So that's number one. Number two, why don't I have one? If we all know it's so valuable, why don't we have one? Can't afford it. We talked about earlier. What is it? Money. Fear. 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 Money. Scared. I won't have enough work. Uh, I don't have any systems. Uh, I don't know where my business is coming from. Fair? Yeah. Very unpredictable business, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What I've learned is if you get help, your business will become predictable because you can spend time doing what makes you money, which is called lead generation. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, your business goes like this. If you watch people whose business continues to grow and grow and grow and grow, they have support. How often in the organization you work at, do you see a person's business go like this and then up and down that has support? They typically don't, right? Because they keep on doing what makes them money. Number three, what do I pay them? What do I pay them? Well, depends on their value, right? So, you know, it could be $12 to $20 an hour. And then you should be paying a bonus. You should be paying a bonus per deal. Buyer side, listing side, that's, you know, should be paying a deal. That person has a stake in the game if it does what? Close. Closes. Closes. So they should be getting a bonus. You know, if, depending on your team and how productive, you know, 50, 100 something dollars a deal, they should be getting a bonus on it. When you get a listing, if you're, if you're a bigger team, a listing manager should get a bonus, and your closing manager should get a bonus. If you only have a one assistant, they should get one bonus for both. Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Do I have enough work for them? I'm going to get back to that one. Everybody in this room has enough work for them. Mm -hmm. You just haven't sat down and thought about what you do in a day. If you don't get to everything in a day, you need help. And we can always do what? Expand. Need more. I need more assistance. I'll be honest. I need more help. Right? Why well, you hired? Huh? Why haven't you hired? I can't. <laughs> Mine's a little different. But I have to end up doing it myself, or I have some other people that I pay to help me too. But I can't get another full-time person there yet. We're getting there. We all just grow at 30, you know, 35, 37 percent a year. Um, we got the right people in there. Um, it's just not there yet. I, as an independent contractor, right? First thing you should be doing is sharing a system. Where do I find help? Okay, where do I find? First spot I'd be advertising is Craigslist. These are not in order. Facebook, ask your friends. Thirdly, ask in the office. Fourth, I'd be asking realtors that maybe are more analytical or more organized, that's a better fit for them. I'm not saying that an analytical person can be good in sales, but maybe that side's a better side for them. License or unlicensed? Marisa? Yeah. License or unlicensed? License all the way. All the way. Because unlicensed, you can't get the true value out of it. Right. Okay. Let's talk about this. I had a hard time giving up control on certain things at the beginning, and then I realized, keep your nose out of it, Jeremy. You're a driver. Let the other person deal with it. <coughs> right? If you hire a person and you let them do the work, let them screw up. And maybe they'll never screw up. But we're not as good as we think we are. So when you guys hire someone who's experienced, let them run with the ball and stay out of it. In my office, Gloria, do I interfere with Gloria? Do I interfere with Dion's new? But I don't, right? You ask me a question and it's focused on what Gloria does well, what do I say? Ask Gloria. Ask Gloria. I'm not getting That's her show. I'm not messing with it. Right? They need to leave. They need to do something. Do I trust them they're leaving and they're doing something? Yep. It's your show. You figure out if you get your job done, you need to leave 30 minutes earlier, you need to come 30 minutes tomorrow, and it's a serious reason why, go do it. Right? You need to put the trust in the other person. The biggest challenge what you guys are going to have, I've noticed over the years with people, is giving up what? Control. Control. You gotta give up. You gotta give up control. Drivers, you are horrible at this. Horrible. Analytical, you're horrible at this. Expressives and amiable, you're great. 
right? Why is that? Amiable, right? It's a personalized style that you'll get along with everybody. You trust everybody. Expressive, outgoing, typically jumping around a little bit, but you're very trustworthy and put in our people. Driver wants to have their hands in everything, and the analytical takes so long to make a decision, they don't want to not be able to get the final say. Fair? Is that fair? Yes or no? Yes. yes. What do I pay? And we talked about that eight. What will they do? <laughs> what won't they do? That's the question. What won't they do? Picture this world. And here's my biggest challenge, I think, in my office. Is people giving up control. Okay? If more people would listen to me on the control part, their business would increase 25, 50, 100%. And their business is already growing, so I don't blame them for not listening on this part. Because most of the people will listen on lead gen, they'll listen on skills, at least on systems. But hiring that help and investing in themselves, they have a challenge with. Right? Mark, think about it. If we don't have that many assistants, we should. We have, we have guys, we have people's business growing. I mean, we're on 30 some percent a year, right? So check this out. Here's why they have a challenge with it. They don't sit down and think about what they do and what they can't do. That's the first step that you need to do. What do I do and what can I outsource? What can I outsource? What can I get everybody else to do? If you sit down and you think about your business that way, that person has plenty to do. The picture is perfect world. Here's my original world. Get the office in the early in the morning, get on the phones, um, try to find business, worked all day. I was like, this business is a bunch of bull crap. I worked at a small real estate firm. Well, you know, right? We both worked there. Then I realized that I need help. Then I started hiring help. I blew through like three assistants in my old company, and I realized I didn't have systems. Then I put systems in place, and I hired the right people, and my life changed. One year, doubled my business. Double one year. I didn't work more, I didn't do anything else. One year, double. Here's why. I was able to do this. Come to work, have my phone numbers ready. Get on the phone, lead generate. Lunch, right after I had a team meeting, went to lunch, administrative work in the afternoon, appointments in the evening. It's a pretty cool calendar, right? But what I wasn't doing is I wasn't getting crushed with home inspections. I wasn't getting crushed with replies. I wasn't getting caught up in agents' emails or agents' voicemails, right, going back and forth. The next thing you know, a five-minute conversation. You guys ever have this happen? Agents like to talk? Mm -hmm. Right? On the phone? That's why they created a slide dial. Call them back and leave a voicemail. It's a joke, but it actually does work. It does work. <laughs> so if you do that and you actually have someone else helping within a day, what can you actually do? What could you get more out of your life if you had a person helping you? What would you guys do if you had an assistant? This side of the room, what would you do? What would you do more of? So you do what? You build your business. Say it louder. Lead generate. This side of the room. Prospects. Lead generate. What else would you do? Make more money. Make more money. What else? Network. Go home. <laughs> Seriously. Turn off the phone. Go to the beach and relax. Right? What would you guys do? More time with the family. What else? Vacation work. Vacation work. Why don't we run it like a doctor's office? Doctors are successful, right? Right? They run yeah, right. a pretty good practice. Right. Mm -hmm. If you run your business like a doctor's office, you'll start to see your increase in what? Business. Productivity and a more what? Balanced life. That's the key. Yeah. You, you, you mentioned something a few moments ago about your, when you decided to hire your first assistant. And um, that's what I'm, I'm hearing folks want. So what, what, what was some of the elements that All right. you did that? I'm so, in brief. question, billionaire real estate agent book. I read this book, I interviewed people who are going to do a billion dollars in sales. Locally, Alan Dahl was in the book, and it was across the United States. 
I read the book for one reason, 400 some pages. I wanted to figure out when these people hired assistants. It's the only thing I wanted out of the whole book, because they interviewed everybody, right? It's the only thing I wanted to get out of the book. Uh, Steve Cantor wrote the book, Best Age of Business. And here's what I realized. Once you get to around 25, 30 deals, you need assistance, you need help. You can get to the next level by just working more hours, but you're just going to burn yourself out. So why not work smarter and hire a person? So what I would be doing is I would be hiring an assistant and sharing it. Even if you're at 20 deals, and here's what you have to do. Commit to 15 hours a week. What will happen to your business if you guys all said, listen, I'm going to hire an assistant, and we're going to split them three ways, 45 hours a week, 15 hours a week. What would you guys, how would your business grow? D? Oh, tremendous. Probably. Why would it grow? Check this out. This is weird. I never realized this. Why would your business grow if you dedicated 15 hours a week? Because that's 15 hours then I can dedicate to other things. So I thought that was the answer. It's not. Did you hear what she said? Yeah. Say it louder. That's 15 hours I can dedicate to other things. That's 15 hours I can dedicate to what I want during the week. I thought that was the answer. It's not. What is it? Huh? You make sure that that 15 hours of stuff that's getting done by somebody else. Get closer. It's an accountability tool. It's an accountability tool. Do you guys ever notice as human beings we worry about everybody else except them? We're the last person we worry about. Really? Think about it, right? For the most, we're all good people here, right? Mostly that's what it is. When you have another person's livelihood on the line and you commit to 15 hours a week, you don't want to do what? If you have kids, would you ever disappoint yourself or your kid? Not right? You don't want to disappoint that kid. <laughs> Same with another person. You don't want to disappoint that other person. What you'll realize, your business will go up because you commit to 15 hours a week mm -hmm. that someone else is going to help you. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. um, when I decided to get... Uh, it worked out really well. The assistant I had... How'd your business go up once you got an assistant? I mean, <coughs> How much? Probably 30%. Anybody want your business go up 30%? Yeah. 50? Mm -hmm. And I, I just hired her and I did in like August, but she did it with my short sale process too. I helped her out with my attorney, and now she can charge on the HUD and not worry about that fee and charge a buyer. So now she has a vested interest in completing the short sale. Are you splitting one or you have one full time? Now I split it with her. Now the other woman is trying to lure her away because she's that good. So right. it's like crazy. But, um, it's, but it's amazing. And but I pay her. She's an LLC. I can write that off. Here's a question for you guys. Thing. Who in this it's room great. thinks they can do what he's doing part-time assistant? Raise your hand. What's stopping you? Finding the right person. Back row. Basically the whole process. What process? Getting somebody, then obviously it's just a, you know, a, a fit limiting situation. thought, but mm -hmm. getting somebody, going through it, they suck. All right, there's three weeks down the drain, waste of money. Now the truth's coming out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Keep on going. Yeah, so then, okay, then you go to another one. You've already spent about four to $500 on the last person. They didn't do shit, you know, and then you're getting somebody else. And basically, that, that for me, okay. it's, it's basically the process of getting Fair training, statement. You know, so I recommend like just hooking up with me and I'll help you find the assistant. I have where to advertise, I have what to ask, I'll even help you interview them, and I'll help you hire them. And then once you hire them, I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. I will give you the checklist and top producer. This is what they do, this is what you do. Get your ass out of their stuff and get over here, <laughs> right? That's the first challenge we always have is they want to keep their hands in it. Okay. Gently, just teasing, but gently, let's get you back over here. So, Nikki, that's a fair statement. Anybody else? What's another reason? Um, I had a separate question. Yeah. Um, so, you hire that person 15 hours a week. What jobs are they doing in that 15 hours? Yeah. Are they First thing in the morning, they're getting you phone numbers because we all have challenge getting phone numbers for leads, right? The second thing what they're doing is, and I have these checklists for everything, what they do, what they don't do. If you email me, I'll send it to you. Is the second thing that they're doing is they're taking care of your administrative stuff in the morning so you can focus on lead generation. The third thing they're doing is they're dealing with your home inspections. But I'm good on home inspections. Guess what? You're not as good as you think you are. Hmm. Other people can do it too. Some of my contingency dates and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Keep track of all that. Getting the checks, getting the house on the market, dealing with the contracts, having to deal with all that stuff. If you have a good assistant, that's what they should be doing. Really? 
could you picture your life like this? <clears throat> they generate, I go on appointments, and I check emails. That's it. I lead generate, I go on appointments, and I pick up contracts. That's it. When you get a listing, here's a listing contract. Get it on the market. I don't have all the paperwork. Right? Yeah. Hopefully you're good at getting paperwork. If you're not, then that person will help you get a page or two. But you have to commit to yourself you're good at getting the paperwork. Get it all signed and appointed. Here's how a deal goes. Get, get the contract, get it signed, get an appointment. Assistant goes out, gets the house on the market, boom, grabs the seller's disclosure, puts it on the market. Every week, that assistant sends feedback to your agent, to your client, with you on it, and says, here's what's happened, here's what's not, here's the hits, here's what we're doing, and then you respond back and say, we're on it, blah, 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 here's what we're doing, okay? Let them do the bulk of it. Every week, now you're touching your clients on listings. Then on the pendings, they're doing all the contract work, you're still involved with the contract work, but they're the go-to person. Is that fair? Yeah. Is that selling a pretty good world? Now it all depends. If you enjoy that part, then it's hard. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't take the contract part away. The inspection part, if you if you do, because some people like that. You know what I mean? Have them do other things. Other things they can do. One of the biggest things in the tip that you gave me was set a time in the late afternoon, three, four o'clock. Spend thirty minutes with punch lists of everything your assistant needs to discuss with you yep. regarding a wrap up of the day. Yep. This has happened, this has happened, we have a problem here, this has to be addressed, this, 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 are all done. Yep. You go home and don't have to worry about all the things that were floating around in your head going, wonder where this is, wonder where this is. At the end of the day, they recap everything and you go home relieved. Yeah, team meeting at lunchtime and then before they go home at the end of the day, a recap. And then if you get that weird phone call at 6.30 and it says, Hey, Ken, where's this at? Or, hey, Todd, where's this at? You know. Because the worst feeling is that you don't know, right? That's one of the reasons why we don't fuck control. So what else systems do I need? I can help you guys with that. How much can I make? How much do you guys think you could make more if you had someone else? This side of the room, let's get a number. How much more can you make? You've got about five minutes to be done. Huh? This side of the room. How much can you make more if you think you get some help? Three times what you pay them. Three times what you pay them. Who wants a 300% investment? I'm watching the stock market where there's a financial advisor who tells me a 401k return is what? Six. Check us out. What's a 401k average return right now? 8%. 8%. What's a good return on flipping houses? I flip houses. Who 30, 32. 35. 35%. Okay? So check this out. This is what I'm going to leave you guys with. I want you to think about this. 35% on flipping houses, 8% on 401ks. Oh, I'll tell you about this game changer investment called CDs. <laughs> what are they paying out? A half percent? Right? We're lucky. What else can you what else can you make at least three times on your money? I doubled mine. Think about this, right? What about this side? How much more do you think you can make? If you're doing 20 deals a year, or you're doing 30 deals a year, do you think you could double your business? Yeah. Yeah, because here's why. If that person is taking 15 hours of your life back, that's 45 hours a month, though. That's 60 hours a month, you could do what? Build your business. Yeah. Right? What was the stat that Tom Ferry gave us at the event? If you get up one hour earlier, how many more days do you get out of the year? 30 days, you get an extra month. So if you guys say you're running out of time, I'd say go to bed earlier, get up earlier. But if you have an assistant, you'll get 60 hours back in your life. Is that fair? So here's what I'm going to do for you guys. Who would like to hire an assistant? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I can't hear you. All right. Can't see you. All right. So here's you got a couple options. Number one, hire a part-time assistant and share it with two or three people. Okay? If you want help on that, send me an email and leave it with that. Okay? Fair? Mm -hmm. Number two, if you want a trained assistant who's already trained, that's a virtual assistant, does not come to the office, see Marisa after the meeting. Marisa is mobile assistant. She works at home now. She's a virtual assistant for people. Here's your challenge to debate. You have to be able to give up control if you want an assistant in either aspect. 
And number two, you start having to get in better paperwork. Mm -hmm. So when you go out and get a deal signed, you gotta get all the paperwork and then turn it over to the assistant and let them run with it. As soon as you start trying to get your hands involved in some things and not in other things, what happens? Huh? It's true. Right? When you're in a rowing team, each person in the rower has a certain job. That's right. right? That's right. Same thing on this. You got to keep your hands out of it, trust the person, and it'll typically what will happen? It'll run smoothly. Right? So we're going to leave you with this. You can either hire a virtual assistant or you can hire a part time assistant. Make a commitment to yourself to get a 300% return, 100% return, because we both know the 401k market and stock market and flipping houses aren't going to get you that, right? Mm -hmm. Warren Buffett's a pretty smart guy, isn't he? Yeah. He says the last person we invest in is who? Ourself. So today, 2015, I hope you guys take a change. You invest more in yourself, and you'll see that 100, 200, 300% return. If I'm wrong, steak dinner on me. Del uh, Fresco. The only way it's wrong is if you don't do what? The effort in. You don't take action. Mm -hmm. You take action and don't do it. So what? So what do you guys think today? Excellent. here afterwards if you guys want to ask me any questions or if you want to talk to Marisa as an assistant or if you still have questions do I get one I don't or habits come up we'll help you and uh, we'll go from there. Sound good? Yep. Have a great week. Congrats. Thank you.